So I've spent the last week or so messing around with the Unihertz Jelly 2E. This is one of the smallest full-fledged smartphones on the market. I've tried using it a fair amount, and I think I finally have some thoughts to share about it. Hopefully you've already seen my unboxing and first impressions. This is an actual review. This is going to go that step further beyond first impressions and tell you what I actually think about this device. And I have a fair amount of thoughts to share. So first things first, let's go around the actual hardware of the device because, I mean, let's be honest, that's kind of uh, the show-stopping feature of this thing. It is absolutely tiny. Now, depending on who you listen to, the box or uh, their documentation, this is either a 3-inch screen or a 3.3-inch screen. I guess it really doesn't make a big difference either way. It is relatively thick to pack in that 2,000 milliamp hour battery. You have a volume rocker here, power button, and then also there's a... A programmable key there which we'll get into a little bit later USB-C charging on the side speaker down here microphone down there and a uh, IR blaster as well as a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack there is a camera on the back and a fingerprint scanner I believe that camera is supposed to be 16 megapixels we'll also get into some photo samples a little bit later you will notice on mine that I am running Niagara launcher because I just feel like it's a better fit for this device. You saw how long that took to actually dismiss. This is also something that we're going to get into. This thing is no speed demon. Uh, like I said, the Niagara launcher seems to be honestly a better fit for this thing than the uh, stock launcher. The stock launcher is okay. It's really, really basic, um, but I would recommend using Niagara launcher. You may have noticed that there are uh, haptic buttons down here for home, back, and multitasking, and that is true, although you can also just use gestures. So I can swipe up and hold and get to the same thing. If I want to go back, I can just as easily swipe from the side to accomplish that task as I can hitting that button there. Now, if you don't know, the Jelly line has actually been around for a little bit, and this is the newest version, like I said, the Jelly 2E. It appears to be a somewhat stripped down version of the Jelly 2 from my perspective, although there are actually some advantages on the Jelly 2E, but there is one particular uh, apparent downgrade that we're gonna talk about a little bit later. And to do that, we're going to look at this list here that they've posted. So we've got here the Jelly 2 and the Jelly 2E. They both say 3 inches, but what's really strange to me about this is that my box definitely says 3.3 .3 inches. So I, I don't know actually who to believe on this information. I guess I could just measure the thing myself, but who, who would do such a thing? Uh, they both weigh the same 110 grams, so it is very, very lightweight. And yeah, it's tiny. Of course, it's going to be very lightweight. One big thing here is we're running Android 12, and that's something that you can definitely see whenever you're looking at the device here. If we go and do the uh, notifications here, you can see that is the Android 12 layout. So that is definitely cool to see that it is on pretty recent uh, software. Dual SIM on both of these things is a good thing to have. It's kind of crazy how many features they've actually packed into such a small, tiny little package. Uh, PTT, that's push to talk key. That's basically what they're calling your little programmable key on the side, which you can program to a push to talk app. Uh, if that's something that you're able to do. Fingerprint scanner on the back, which, yes, there is a fingerprint scanner on the back, but it is very, very slow. In fact, let's uh, let's do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press it now, and that's how long it takes for it to wake up, okay? So you're going to see, I, I could actually hit it and then flip it over and have plenty of time before it's going to show up. So lightning fast fingerprint scanner, it is not, but it does function. There's actually face unlock as well, but it's just using the selfie camera and it's going to work as well as a basic face unlock would typically work. Uh, LTE support does not have 5G. There's no 5G modem in here because the processor that it's using simply is not going to support that kind of thing. 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage. That is a pretty big downgrade because 4 gigs of RAM on an Android phone is pretty much the absolute bare minimum. Now, if the processor, the system on a chip was faster, I think you could get away with this. But the fact that it's using this MT6761 quad-core chip, uh, it, it, it is not a fast phone. Geekbench scores here 136 for the single and 432 for the multi-core. If you compare that to something like my Surface Duo 2, it's literally a factor of 10 lower uh, than something like that. Now, granted, we're comparing something that had a flagship processor in it last year to this, but it does give you sort of an idea of what you should expect. So lot of, not a lot of RAM, not a lot of storage, and let's be honest, a very slow processor. And these things do show up in the day-to-day -day use. It is, like I said, slow to unlock. Let's um, let's actually close YouTube, and I'll just let you see. Look, let's say you, you want to watch a YouTube video, and we'll actually use this as an opportunity to show off the speakers too. Let's launch YouTube and see how long it actually takes to get into it. 
That's not horrifically bad, right? That's actually okay. Let's go into my subscriptions and find one of my videos. There's one. And let's crank up this volume. Surface Duo and Duo 2 users. At long last, Android 12L is finally here. In this video, I'm going to... Now, we'll also use this as an opportunity to test out some music on the speakers as well. So let's hit this push to talk button because I've got a program to launch YouTube music just as an example. So we've launched that now and let's click on search and let's play this. Honestly, the speakers are better than you would probably expect them to be. Like, you could actually, like, leave this thing on a table and listen to music and be kind of okay. It is mono. I accidentally said stereo and had to go back and fix this very quickly. But it does sound relatively good. And you can, I think, see from what I just showed you that normal usage, right? Just doing kind of one thing at a time, which is all you're going to be doing on something like this does work okay. You're going to have to wait a little bit longer from time to time for some apps to launch. But I don't think that that's going to bother the customer for this particular device. And I think that kind of leads me to something that I want to get into. And I guess we have to get into here. And it is who would buy this device and what is it for? What is the point of having a teeny tiny phone like this? My first thought was, hey, this would be a cool weekend phone. And I think, honestly, that's probably the right answer. Most of us have a big smartphone that we carry around whether it's something like our Pixel 7 Pros or our Z Fold 4s or our Surface Duos, whatever it might be. And we use these things to get work done and also to get leisure done. But maybe on the weekend, you want to disconnect. You don't want to spend all your time scrolling through your phone. Or they call it doom scrolling. You don't want to be doom scrolling your entire weekend away. So you pop your SIM out of your primary phone and you pop it into a Unihertz Jelly 2 SE. And you know what? You're not going to be doom scrolling on this thing, okay? Like, yeah, you could go on Facebook, you could go on Instagram. I don't actually have a Facebook, but I, I guess I can show you what Instagram looks like on here. And I mean, yes, technically you can see the photos and so forth. You can you can do this, but you're not going to, okay? This is just not like a great experience to be doing something like this. So you're probably not going to. You're going to be more connected to the real world. You're not going to be spending your time taking lots of pictures with it. You're going to be experiencing, again, the real world. So I think that weekend phone vibe is the one. You're going to drop this tiny little thing into your pocket. By the way, I should have mentioned this already. This case, this little TPU case and the little lanyard thing, uh, it comes with it in the box. So this is what it looks like without that stuff on it. But I find the TPU case and the lanyard to be absolutely delightful and I will leave it on there forever. But you can definitely put this thing in your pocket and leave work behind, so to speak. That, I think, is the best use case for this thing. But there are some other ones that they actually mention uh, on their on their actual website here. They talk about travel, fitness, hiking, etc. And I've kind of thought about these. Travel, I don't know. I feel like I'm traveling... You know, there's there's an aspect of me that wants to say stop taking pictures and just live in the world. But at the same time, like, it's kind of cool to have nice pictures. Find a balance. And this thing just doesn't take the best pictures. When you are in really good lighting, it is passable. Okay, here's a picture of Rose taken right after I got this thing. And in really good lighting, you could live with this. I would argue that it's, it is not great. There's a lot of grain. There's a lot of noise. But you could take that picture. You could post it on Instagram. Throw a filter on it. No one's going to be any the wiser. You can look at the famous backyard tree that is in so many of my samples. And let's kind of get here and let this clean up. And you can see, yeah, there's a lot of noise in the shadows. Not a ton of detail. But again, it's passable. When you get into any sort of not incredibly bright light. This is just in my house. And we zoom in here on Rose and let this clear up. I, I mean, it's just dreadful. It's really, really bad. So in that regard, I don't know that I can really say yes to the travel thing. I'm going to want to have something to take pictures with. And maybe you're going to use it as a companion phone, right? Maybe your SIM is in here. This is in your pocket. Maybe you just have a camera. Maybe you have a proper camera. Maybe you carry another phone, carrying two phones at that point. Are you really saving space by carrying this and then another phone, I don't really know how that works. Maybe you carry this in a tablet, but that kind of throws travel out as well because you're not going to be carrying both of these things at once. And again, photography not going to be a real thing. Fitness makes some sense to me. A lot of people have smartwatches that they put music on and they use it to track things. Well, this is like kind of like a smartwatch, right? You could, you know, you could actually have uh, wired earbuds plugged into this thing. You could have YouTube music. You could have some different athletic tracking apps. I'm sure that there are tracking apps that use 
uh, your phone to track your GPS and things like that. You're not going to be tracking your heart rate monitor, although there is actually a heart rate monitor in this thing that uses the camera. You would just have to manually check it yourself periodically. Anyways, what about hiking? I actually think hiking makes some sense as well. It's going to be really small in your pocket. The battery life is quite solid. It's only 2,000 milliamp hours, but that screen is so tiny, and you're likely to be using it so very little that this thing's going to have no problem lasting you a, a day really, really easily. And in fact, if you really needed to stretch it out, throw on battery saver, this thing's going to last a pretty darn long time. So that does make sense, although when I'm hiking... Do have a tendency to pull up my camera and take some photos here and there of the sights and sounds that I am experiencing. That might be a little bit of a problem there, but for someone who technologically wants to be disconnected, this is probably a good option. You're still going to be able to reach out to people. You're probably not going to want to be texting people, but you can use the speech to text and talk to people, reach out to people if you get lost, if you're in trouble out on that hike. It's a really tiny phone that could potentially serve that purpose for you as well. We do need to factor in a really important thing about this. The price is pretty, pretty low. You're looking at $169.99 for the regular price. But if you do this early bird thing, if you sign up in the link in the description, $139. 140 bucks is not a lot for something like this. So if you think this is something that makes some sense to you, it's not like you're going to be out, you know, $800 for this thing. It's very inexpensive. So it might be worth trying just to see how you would like uh, detoxing from your phone over the weekend. This is actually a phrase that my brother used uh, the other day that he liked to phone detox over the weekend. Well, maybe this is your detox phone. Here at the end of this video, I want to kind of add in a couple of, uh, maybe you would call them miscellaneous things, just little thoughts I have. So that push to talk key. If you go into your settings and you go into intelligent assistance, and then you go into shortcut settings, that's where you can actually map this thing. You can see here, you can map it a couple ways, short press, long press, and double press. So mine by default is short press to launch YouTube music, which is just an app I use a lot. A double press is going to turn on your flashlight, which I actually find to be very, very useful. And then a hold will launch Google Assistant eventually. There it is. So those are just my customizations. You can kind of do whatever you want with it. And it's that's a feature that I wish more phones had. I actually really, really like that feature. Another thing that we have here that is worth talking about is the ability to do a mobile hotspot. So I mentioned using this as a secondary phone. Maybe this is your phone and you keep you know, a bag on you and you keep a full tablet with you and you don't have LTE on that tablet. Well, this could be your hotspot. Relatively large battery. This thing's easy enough to keep charged up over that USB-C connector. Use this as a mobile hotspot that doubles as your phone. That also is a use case that does make some sense to me. I think that's pretty much where I'm at with the Unihertz Jelly 2E. I think that my biggest roadblock with this thing is that for the person that wants that detox phone for the weekend, there are maybe better options. This thing is a full Android device, so you have the freedom of going into the Play Store and installing just about whatever. But I would argue that most of the people that want something like this probably aren't going to be using those things. There, 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 there has to be this very narrow swath of people who want a weekend phone to disconnect from the apps that they use on their normal phone, but still want to have those apps on their detox phone. And that sort of has a bit of a dissonance in my mind. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. It almost makes more sense to buy a dumb phone and have that be your weekend phone. That way you truly are able to, to force yourself to detox from these sorts of things. So let me know what you think about this. Am I missing something here? What is the other use cases you can think of for a device like this? Thanks to Unihertz for sending this thing out. I do hope to work with Unihertz again on some of their other hardware because I really love physical keyboards. So hopefully I'll get a chance to look at some of that stuff as well. In case you were wondering, they are seeing this video at the same time as you No editorial influence was given for this video. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss more coverage just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.